Thank you for coming. No thanks are necessary, General. I trust your recuperation continues apace. I cannot complain. Thanks to Higiri and her ministrations, I've regained much of the strength I lost during my imprisonment. I gather you have made progress in the search for Her Grace. Aye, some good fortune at last. A few days past, Dulala informed us that a sizable shipment of alchemical supplies had been delivered to the palace. With Papa Shan's assistance, I set out to ascertain the source and nature of the shipment. My inquiries led me to Frondale's frontistry. There, I learned that an order had been placed for a curious substance designed to sustain patients trapped in death-like slumber. An invention of the former head alchemist, apparently. A death-like slumber? This cannot be a coincidence. It lends some weight to Dulala's claims, aye. Her grace is likely somewhere within the palace, a bed but alive. Before making any attempt to extricate the Sultana, however, it seemed prudent to learn what manner of substance was used to induce her torpor. To that end, I made inquiries as to the whereabouts of the one most like to have administered it. The lady-in-waiting, Meriel. We sent for you as soon as we learned of her location. All that remains is to apprehend the woman. We shall find our cat's paw in the Silver Bazaar. But we must tread carefully. The market is not the bustling place it once was, and someone is sure to mark our coming. Should they inform the monetarists, we'll have a fight on our hands. We must be prepared for the worst, and being short an arm, I thought it wise to take another in its stead. What say you, warrior of light? Will you lend me yours? Then I pity the bastard that stands in our way. Come, my friend, for Nanamo and for Ulda!
You are Meriel, the Sultana's former lady-in-waiting? I know no one of that name. Pray excuse me. General Alden! We will have the truth from you, girl. Mayhap, it would be better coming from me. Lonorito, you'd best talk fast. As you know, Telegi Adelegi's Cartano Reclamation Bill was no more than a facade. A means to get his grubby little hands on that elegant monstrosity Omega. When he learned of Nanimo's intention to abdicate, however, he was forced to amend his plans. Suddenly, assassination seemed the most promising way to further his ambitions. I am told Telegi had discovered a maid in whose veins ran the blood of House Thorn, a new, more pliable puppet to sit the throne. Twould have caused an uproar, of course, but few could have contested her claim. Twas plain that Telegi's wild machinations had outgrown our ability to control them. So I decided to usurp his scheme and left the fool to seal his own demise. And what of Nanamo? Oh, I have no desire to harm her grace. Twould profit me little to destabilize our government. Thus did I employ young Mariel here to administer a potent sleeping potion in place of a poison. You should know, General, that your dear friend Ilbert was fully aware of my plan. I had him lie about the assassination as a means to prime your rage against Telegi. We weren't entirely sure how you would react, but things went rather better than expected. You conniving little worm! You had your claws in the Crystal Braves before their first recruit had sworn to serve! But of course! When a new game begins, it is only prudent to have a piece on the board. Ilbert was mine. Truth be told, a significant proportion of the Brave's initial endowment was also mine. With such large sums moving about, it was a rather trifling matter to disguise my own contribution. Ah, Ilbert. <laughs> I secured his services with a promise to support his cause once my authority had been solidified. I swear, the man thinks of naught but prizing Alamigo from the grasp of the Empire. Unlike you, General, the poor fellow seems quite unable to forsake the land of his forefathers. Mayhap, that's why he called you a traitor to your people and a disgrace to your homeland, amongst other things. What was it he always compared you to? Uh, oh, yes, an overgrown lapdog begging for scraps at the Sultana's table. <laughs> oh, how we laughed. Alas, Ilbert's entertaining little outbursts eventually gave way to wearisome tirades, and the zealous brute became rather unruly. I had no wish to see you executed, you understand, but he would not take no for an answer. 
Rest assured, his employment with me has long since ended. Which brings us neatly to the present. What say you, General? Both you and the Sultana are alive. We have one corpse and one fugitive. And preparations have been made to restore your good name. Shall we cry quits and start again with a blank ledger? Hmm? The hells we will! Do you honestly expect me to forgive and forget? After all you've done, you're guilty of high treason! Stay your blade, Master Alden. You yourself are not innocent. Or have you forgotten your own crime in executing Telegi Adelegi without trial? Though you acted out of loyalty to the Sultana, such deeds are in violation of both the word and spirit of the law. If you would, Lord Lollarito? This potion will wake the Sultana from her slumber. Consider it a gesture of conciliation. You will find her grace resting comfortably within her private chambers. Should you doubt my word, I shall willingly accompany you to the palace as your hostage. I like not your motives, Lollarito. But you saved the Sultana's life, and for that, you have my gratitude. Rauban Aldin. You are hereby reinstated as General of the Immortal Flames. The citizens of Uldar shall once more be united under Nanamo Ulnamo, and together we shall usher in a new age of prosperity. Thank you.